part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome back, everybody, to Podcast 616, the official podcast of Earth 616. I am your host, Damon Royster, and today we are talking about X-Men 97, Episode 7, entitled Bright Eyes, a.k.a. A Recitation on Grief. Joining me today for this uh, cheerful conversation of this episode are two fantastic guests. They're both veterans. No newbies anymore. No, none. I don't want them. I only want experienced people, especially as we're getting deeper into the X-Men 97 universe. My first guest, we'll go in alphabetical order. Uh, they are a writer, performer based in LA. They're super cute and they're great with mm-hmm. dogs. Please welcome to your ears, Ethan August. Yeah. Hello. It's great when you get to make your friends say things about you. Uh, so happy to I, be back. So happy to have you. <laughs> also, we haven't hung out in so long. This is the hangout. This is the hangout. This is the hangout. Ethan, just a quick temperature check. Are you enjoying X Men 97? I'm in. I'm all in. It's, it's so fun to take a cartoon you grew up with and be like and now you get to just enjoy it as an adult and it's adult now yeah um, and like wow the world can change with me uh this is good this is the one yeah. part that's good <laughs> it's like all your childhood friends grew up with you and they're murking people left and right oh and um, they are not doing well no <laughs> everyone's upset in our second seat today oh boy we've heard her on iron man 2 and we heard her on Secret Invasion. The not so secret guest is a member of the Second City Green Co. Touring Company. Congratulations. And if you're in the market, a tarot card reader in her own right, please welcome to your ears, Felicia McLeod. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Felicia, off mic, we discussed how. So the last <laughs> time you were here, we talked about Secret Invasion and you watched all the episodes about that. Yes. But for this, you decided just to watch. You've only seen episode seven of X Men ninety seven. They should have just called it episode one for me, because that's the only episode I had seen. But Mm -hmm. I do want to go back and watch it because it does remind me of growing up and watching my brothers watch X Men. They didn't let you sit and watch the TV. You had to watch them. (laughs) Like facing, I had to watch their reactions and then trying. You're in the other room, just watching the reflection in their eyes. This is fascinating. This is actually a common thing I've heard on this podcast from uh, adult women who have brothers that as this is like a thing, sisters were made to like hang to the back. Yeah, it's like they we, I would watch the cartoons they wanted to watch and I would be like, OK, I guess I'm enjoying this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was good, yeah, even though there's uh, there's some people who I kind of knew and a lot I didn't know. And. Honestly, that's why I have a podcast, because I can't stand the fact that someone I know doesn't know what's happening in one of my favorite TV shows. And I, also, I, I want to apologize in advance to anybody listening who's like, oh, they'll be bad. Wrong. <laughs> they'll be bad. I want to apologize retroactively that you watched all of Secret Invasion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the McLeod, two shows would, that you jumped into to do that. <laughs> would you agree that episode seven of X-Men 97 was better than all of Secret Invasion? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And, not, not um, and I can't question, get that time but... back. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. And I won't give it. All right. So this is always interesting to like do these podcast episodes because like we're just talking about it for the first time. But I've been talking about this show. So I'm just going to dive in and just mm. let y'all catch up. Gambit's dead. Mm. Um, what? <laughs> he, he, he is dead. We open on a funeral. It's like, <laughs> get ready this is a very x-men thing this was like giving me like x-men 3 when um the professor died like he always fucking is but we open on gambit's funeral and um ethan august is nightcrawler part of the clergy did we know this Mm. oh dude's hella religious uh and i also think probably booked up because that's a good eulogy and and you know, I don't I don't know what his calendar looks like, but I'm sure that people are trying to like slide in and be like, hey, my my dad's on his way out. Nightcrawler. Look, you think he can pop in? It's a good thing he's a teleporter. So he, he just keeps the transportation yeah. cost low. He can be anywhere we need. Mm-hmm. And, you know, also there was a lot of death in Genosha. A lot of mutants passed. Again, I mean, we're seven episodes deep. We've asked this question every week. Is the show meant for children? I think not. To take the time to go over the grief of a cartoon character is something I didn't think I would ever see. But I think as Ethan knows, I don't love cartoons. 
famously famously oh. does not like animation no no so, i did i did recently watch perfect blue michael we got to talk about that um <laughs> we'll talk about that off the mic. Uh, Producer Michael is shaking his head. Um, but yeah, this is a very somber episode. So, like Felicia McLeod, this being your first, I'm so yeah. sorry. This is <laughs> well, this is your first episode. This is your first scene. Hey, uh, you want to come watch a fun cartoon? <laughs> well, I love Lifetime movies, so it was right up my alley. Um, Perfect. So Great. it really brought me into a world where I was like, okay, we're at a funeral. This might be a bad question, so I apologize in advance. Is Nightcrawler uh, Caribbean or uh, in, in any way? Because he, <laughs> and you can throw me away. His name is Kurt Wagner. Okay. And he is German. Okay. So, so as yes. Caribbean as you can get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so an authentic Caribbean, yes. Because I is just felt Caribbean? like. <laughs> he said it in a, in a way. And I was like, hmm. And I rewound it. And I was like, okay, Jamaican. So it's just uh, the word well, it tipped you it, off. <laughs> it was just the word it. And I didn't like question. At the end, he did say something about German. Um, what did you he know, say? he did say something about German something. He did at the end. But I, I let that wash over me because I said, you know how Jamaicans talk about Germans all the time. And I, I would say that is your uh, nationality, uh, Jamaican. Yes. yes. So it was nice yes. to feel seen in that moment. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just but then I wasn't save you in it's... that moment, and then now that the, <laughs> the rug has been pulled out from underneath you, yeah, I'm taking that away as well. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mm. And that's what I get for not watching the first six episodes. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know, Damon. You haven't recorded episode six yet, right? Where they do have the like ten minute conversation about how Nightcrawler is not Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that was a huge part of episode six. Not um, from the Caribbean at all. They had a whole diagram of like where he's from. They just kept circling Germany on a map. Did they? And putting X's through <laughs> <laughs> They did not. The um, X-Men, it's all about marking X on the map from where each uh -huh. character is from. Yeah. <laughs> oh okay. I'm watching all of it when I'm off of this. <laughs> so what I love about this funeral is that we get a lot of uh, backstory about Gambit. I feel like mm -hmm. this show never really went into Gambit's backstory. I feel like that was mainly in the comic books. We learned, like, you know, he had this dark past and, like, he never got over it. And, my God, Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler this season has just been dropping bars. Um, mm -hmm. Every gambler has a tell, and modesty was Gambit's. Ugh. I'm broken. Everybody has some, everybody has good lines. It's even, like, right off the bat in this scene. And it's cool to see rewatching it. And now I'm especially curious, Felicia, with your with dropping right into it, because I was like watching out of context of the other episodes. I was like, this does kind of stand on its own really well. The writing is mm -hmm. like pretty tight and punchy yeah. of like, I don't know if you know much about Wolverine, but when he's like, yeah, Grief's a lonely battle. You're like, oh, this dude has been around the block a few times. He's mm. uh, he's seen a lot of people go. Yeah. And that ultimately is like. And I, I feel like I'm echoing my previous thoughts in other episodes, but like that's just what makes the X Men stand out is that there's just they can go into these like grief spaces and talk about loss because like you know it's not really a we won or lose thing for them because there's always this like we're also fighting for acceptance and tolerance and like people just let us live you know because like this wasn't it wasn't even like they lost to a big bad this was a surprise attack against their people you know. And I just, I really appreciate that the show is like really going, digging into that and like how that would feel uh, for them. Mm -hmm. Um, We get a little moment from Jubilee. She mad. Uh, she mad. She mad at Rogue. Where's Rogue? Where's Rogue? And isn't that so true to life being like, you need to grieve the way, grieve the way I want you to grieve instead of mm -hmm. like, look, Rogue needs to go Rogue right now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, and speaking of going Rogue, Felicia McLeod, um, have you ever been so mad that you flew into an army base and <laughs> ripped apart a tank? Yeah, they messed up my schedule at work, and I said, <laughs> <laughs> "I flew to I'm army not base. free Friday." <laughs> and they're like, "Your job's not here." Yeah, mm -hmm. so we don't make the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do it. The army base said that to you, like, "We, you don't work here." <laughs> You don't work here. And I was like, oh, sorry. I'll fix that glass if it's $50. Yeah. But only. <laughs> um, question for the court. Did anyone play Marvel vs. Capcom, the video game? There's a nod from this end of the mic. Yeah. Mm. That oh, mic yeah. is nodding. The other mic 
stone cold still um wait wait maybe uh, frame the question did you ever watch your brothers play marvel versus mm, capcom in a mm-hmm. separate room in a separate room i might have heard <laughs> i might have heard it because i remember yeah. hearing wolverine's uh what do you call those knives in his hands? claws claws correct mm-hmm. i've heard that correct <laughs> mm-hmm. well th- this uh so the cool thing about the show uh this i talked about this in the first episode with cyclops that like the animators uh based a lot of the fighting moves off of the video game marvel versus capcom and this is a moment where rogue like she um how can i display this both for you on a zoom call and also oh, listeners yeah. audibly mm-hmm. but she like um i guess she like flies into the air and then she goes down foot first into the tank and mm-hmm. like the angle is like you see her foot going like this and that's a move that she that was like one of her fighting moves is to like fly at a diagonal at her, her opponent and a flying drop kick a flying drop kick thank you that's, that's cool. why that is why ethan august is here thank you ethan august um <laughs> Yes, a flying dropkick. So it's just like, again, they, the people making the show love these characters as much as we love these characters, that they're mm-hmm. going beyond just the comics and the cartoon, but also to the video game, to the you know the media at large that's available to draw inspiration from. I, I loved it. It is also with the like, I'm sure you talked about this, the show is just packed full of those kinds of references to like other bits mm-hmm. of X-Men media, but to be like, okay. We know that Felicia is going to be jumping in just at episode seven. So we have to tell her what everything in the show is in the first two scenes, which is <laughs> we're going to make the space for an animated character's death. We're going to have a beautiful scene about grieving. And then also Rogue's going to just smash, smash. through tanks like butter. Yeah, just <laughs> and to go to the ex- extreme opposite end of the spectrum right away. It's great. And they're like, yeah, that is how I feel when my my Creole lover dies. My Creole lover. Remy LeBeau. Um, again, Brad Johnson says I sound great doing that voice. Another question for the court. How are we feeling about Rogue? Last time we were discussing Rogue on this podcast, my guests were not on her side. Um, am I wrong? I'm kind of team Rogue here. Oh. I'm team Rogue, yeah. I'm team Rogue. She's okay. lost. Well, they said mm-hmm. two people. Um, two? Yeah. Oh, my God. But probably she, way more. She doesn't even know. Even if she doesn't know that Rogue is having an affair. With well, I, I jump ahead to the to the end. The to the, end. the man tied up in the last yeah. reveal was. And her I was other like, lover. "Who is this?" <sighs> that is Mag- That is Magneto, and Rogue was sleeping with him. But Don't she, she thinks he's love. dead. Yes, she does. Yeah. She thinks he and Gamma she- are dead. And that's why people were shocked. Because at the end, I was like, "Now who is this?" <laughs> <laughs> what a What's dramatic this? haircut. <laughs> I was like, I got to talk to a couple barbers and be like, you have got to make your barbershop more welcoming. This was scary. Yes. <laughs> the villain of the season is barber. Uh, that's what Felicia believes. And I, I don't want to change that for you. Bastion the barber is what we'll call him. Um, so Rogue shows up, meets Colonel Ross, General Ross. This is like Thunderbolt Ross. General, yeah. Thaddeus. Thaddeus, Thunderbolt yeah. Ross. Who names their kid Thaddeus? Soon to be played by Harrison Ford in the next Captain America movie, I believe. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's been in the, that character has been in a lot of the Hulk movies. They're going to recast him as Harrison Ford because the actor who was playing him passed away. Mm-hmm. But I like that because he was in the Hulk movies, he had like that throwaway line of like, "This base is supposed to withstand the Hulk, not Rogue." <laughs> Rogue's like, "Sorry, I missed that." <laughs> <laughs> I Wait, uh, Hulk. it just came from here. <laughs> um, <laughs> What were the arguments against Rogue? Like, did did you see any of those showing their head in these early scenes of... I mean, we had a whole... It, this is like episode five, so there was like a lot of conversation about her bouncing back and forth between Magneto and Gambit, and like, maybe she... And she was keeping a lot of secrets, even though that was more okay. the writer's fault than hers, because they had to like reinvent this whole affair with Magneto. So there was just... Much like Felicia, I was with two people who had not really been friends of the franchise, so I had to defend her. Um, so they were just like, girl, open communication. And she's like, yeah. And now in this episode, she's communicating very openly. Mm. Oh, I know exactly how she feels. Kiss with a fist. Um, a kiss with a fist are better than none. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So she's on the hunt for... So basically, Rogue's mission is to find... Gyrick and Bolivar Trask, who are the men responsible for creating the Sentinels, which, you know, fair. They made those big machines that are killing mutants. Mm. Go get them. Go to the source. Go to the source. And we're going to go to Cyclops with the president 
anything to say here. I'm totally down to skip. There's only one scene I want to talk about Cyclops, and it's not this. Does anyone have anything to say about Cyclops and the president? Literally, this is your time. Actually, I have a lot of thoughts about the presidency, but maybe this isn't the space for it. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, this is only the spot for fake presidencies like this. Fake presidency. Oh, okay. I've got lots more thoughts on fake presidencies. <laughs> this vaguely John F. Kennedy-esque president. Like, who is this? Man? He's just... <laughs> It's, I also man? think it's it's been Kelly in like every X Men thing that I've seen. Well, it's like senator. he's either a senator or he's a mm. or he's the president or he's the president. That's when he um, was t- talking to him and he was like, "Look, you don't want somebody else in office because they won't be able to support you like me. I'm doing your mm-hmm. best, the best uh-huh. I can do. When really he's like not doing the best." Yeah, it's like a very straightforward scene, but I do think it like plants the seeds of the themes that the rest of the episode works on. But it's mm-hmm. not funny. There's yeah. n- there's nothing funny to talk about in there. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a real dry episode. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. But but you're right. It does set up them going to Genosha. Is because like they're basically asking for aid from the U.S. government, and they're like, Ugh. he's like, I don't have aid. <laughs> I got no, other no, stuff. No, no. What? But if I give you aid, then I won't have as much stuff, and then I won't be able to pay for more Sentinels. <laughs> I mean, uh, which is the books. whole cause of why you are suffering in the first place. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Because, like, see, Felicia, you may not get it, but I think you get it. <laughs> I said, I'm still human, you know, but also a mutant. Yeah. There we go. See? Where does ordinary people? Um, okay. So. Well, that's kind of out there. <laughs> watch Loot Season 2, everybody. Um, the X-Men go to Genosha. This is also really cool. Like, I like seeing relief aid. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, I don't know, like. On the one hand, I do like, I know that this is like, forgive me, a little bit of filler, but also I want to see this. I do want to see them helping out other mutants because the X-Men can sometimes, don't arrest me, but they can sometimes be a little privileged from their place, (sighs) sitting in their mansion in the U.S. And not every mutant is gorgeous. Not every mutant has a body like Cyclops. Gene Rogue or Storm. And, you know, sometimes you got to reach out and leave your comfortable little Danger Room X Mansion. I said it. Yeah. So and I not just to... by private jet. Mm. Not just by private jet. I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've been following me, though. I, I did set up a Twitter account where I've been following all of the flight logs at the Blackbird just to see, like, you know, how much the X Men are personally polluting. Is this real? <laughs> no, this is just a Taylor Swift joke. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going after world. Taylor Swift. I'm going after the president. I am not here to make friends. Drag them. <laughs> no, you just made a best friend. <laughs> yeah. I would say, much like Taylor Swift, you're not here to make friends. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't get that reference. God. Trish. I have to talk about Trish. Felicia McLeod, um, mm. producer Michael, he does research on all my guests. And he found out you actually were an intern working under the reporter, Trish Tilby. Mm-hmm. Um, do you remember her from the episode? Seeing her I again? Do. Yeah, because she, okay. she, she was like, oh, I'm so sorry this is happening. I'm here to uh, show this to everybody. Um, uh-huh, uh-huh. She, I felt like she was doing it with good intentions um, when mm. I first started, when I filled out my application to be her intern. Um, yes. But then as I like started working there, I realized we were still working within our privilege and not mm-hmm. really going out to spaces like um, where there really was tragedy. So we finally did. Um, and uh and i was like proud of trish but i also don't know if it was from a genuine place yeah wow. And, wow. and felicia did uh when you worked with her did she try to fuck a lot of her interview guests or was that <laughs> only in war zones or just the blue ones <laughs> it's just, just the, the blue, blue ones. ones in war zones because she's like that's what gets her hot and heavy that's a mood yeah rubble trish is about- rumble <laughs> a rumble in the rubble trish is a whole mood i <laughs> Also, I didn't say this to my guests, so but I guess it only applies to half of you. Uh, no spoilers. We don't do spoilers, no spoilers for future episodes, but I just don't trust Trish. And I'll just say that. I don't think we can trust her. I don't, I, we don't know what's going on in her head. She didn't do a background check on me, so I don't trust her. <laughs> <laughs> you got a crazy background. <laughs> <laughs> they got to check out on you. <laughs> they got to check. She didn't. You know, that's what it is. This is also the scene that starts where you realize that I think Beast is carrying around a little 
quote booklet in his back pocket. Mm-hmm. He drops two. <laughs> drops two this episode. Including uh, famous PBS uh, host, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Fred Rogers, who I did hear that Trish did really get up in that sweater. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He had a blue sweater one day. Could not hold her back. Could not. Trish said blue. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, anything else to say about Trish or the also the tragedy of Genosha? <laughs> I was just I was also going back to uh Hulk having those those quotes. So like mm-hmm. I wanna is this happening who, in every episode? Who those quotes? Was not Hulk. Uh was I meant to say Beast Beast. Beast. <laughs> Hulk is green, Beast is blue. I am I'm not colorblind, but if I was <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. Please uh, continue. Does he do cults uh, or do, cults? Does he cults? Uh, say quotes? Kind of. <laughs> yeah. He isn't a cult. Yeah. He isn't a cult. Because, <laughs> I mean, Beast's mutation is, of course, that he looks like a beast and he's blue and hairy, but also he's very smart. Yeah. About everything. Also, actually, this is so with X Men 97 coming out, my friend, I've had like several group texts where people are like, tag yourself. Uh, and when someone was like, I'm Beast, we were like, Let's talk about Beast for a second because <laughs> Beast is one of the original X Men who used to look like everybody else and then experimented on himself and advanced his own mutant gene until he turned into a beast. So he, you're um, right, you're right. It's not. It is technically his mutant thing that he is blue and beasty, but it's also kind of he exasperated that, which I think is you know it's fun. That's right, because his thing was just he had really big feet and he was like so embarrassed by it. <laughs> And he was like, let me just try some experimenting and then just turned him even more. Yeah, he was like, I've got like hobbit hair on my toes right now and I need to see if I can take that all the way. Mm, full body. Full body. Full, full body beast. Um, mm. Speaking of full body, we have a little cameo in this episode. <gasps> I we can, can talk about the full body, but I'm only interested in America's ass. <laughs> Thank you. That is the better transition. Correct. I was thrilled. This is, oh, like I know it wasn't Chris Evans, which I dealt with in therapy, but um, I <laughs> love seeing Captain America uh, show up because, and um, even though, yes, we have not recorded episode six at the time of this recording, but I bet you when I record episode six, I'm going to say what I like a lot about this show is how this is, this is real Marvel. This is the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. Where anyone can show up at any time. Like, you don't need to worry about hiring Chris Evans or a contract deal with Sony Pictures. You can just, like, cut to, here's Captain America just showing up. And here's some space aliens. And here's a magic book from Doctor Strange and next to Wolverine. Like, you can just put them all together, which is how they're meant to be. They all exist on the same planet. Mm. <sighs> so Rogue meets Captain America. Ethan August, can you describe the scene for me? I'm over. The scene rocks. This is... I, I want to skip to the end so badly, uh, but Rogue shows up thinking that she's uh, found the next lead on Guy Rick and Trask, and Captain America's like, whoa, let's do this by the books. Um, he's oh. invest- he's investigating it separately, and then you're like, okay, good dude, but he's also like, color within the lines, little girl. Uh, she spits the word cop at him, which fucking rocks. Uh, mm-hmm. And there's like a veiled threat, but he's he doesn't ever like raise it to violence. He's just like, look, I care about this too. And then she does maybe the best thing you could ever do with super strength, which um just Flies takes his <laughs> takes a shield and just hurls it the fuck into the mountains. It's the pettiest thing, and it is the best thing. I think it's we need more it, of that. I it reminded it. me. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I just love that she did it. And then was looking at him. Yeah. Like she did it. She looked at him like, I did that. You mm. can't fly, bitch. Come get me. <laughs> jump. Yeah, jump up here. What you gonna do? Uh what she threw what she threw the shield. It just reminded me of when Bart Simpson was whipping cupcakes against a wall. Uh you YouTube it, it's a great scene. I remember as a kid when I was first like I think someone explained to me the X-Men as like, oh yeah, and like Everybody has like one thing, you know, like Cyclops shoots lasers out of his eyes. Uh, Iceman is ice. And then uh, Rogue confused me because 
they don't get into it a ton in the show. Rogue has a lot of different things. But I was also kind of like, with the X-Men, so many of them can fly and have super strength. And I was like, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. And now I know why. It's so that we can see that super strength is possibly the pettiest superpower. Mm. Yes, yes. I also want to say I'll take this time to explain that Rogue, um, while she was under the tutelage of Mystique, unbeknownst to her, uh, she thought it was her mother, but it was really Mystique in disguise. Rogue was instructed to take the powers from Miss Marvel, later to be Captain Marvel, if you need more context, Brie Larson. And she took all her powers and left uh, Miss Marvel's future Captain Marvel in a coma. And then Rogue still retained that strength and flight because she took so much energy out of Miss slash Captain Marvel. <clears throat> That's she a- was Captain and then Rogue got in there and now she's Miss. Is that how that went? Mm. She the, demoted the, her. The Miss to Captain was a whole nother thing. There was like a whole time where like Rogue, she took so much of her memory that she thought she was Miss Marvel. She's like, I'm Miss Marvel. And it's like, girl, no. Girl, no. <laughs> You're a thief. That's Felicia, my, that's have you third, have you ever superpowered your way out of a to like end a conversation? Like what's the it's a great question. What's the it's pettiest a, thing you've used your powers for? Mm, probably. And what are your powers? <laughs> I get an eyelash in my eye and I'm like, mm, I gotta get this because it hurts and everybody knows it hurts. So no one's going to be like, no, continue talking. They're going to be like, go handle that. Um, so your so power, Wolverine, you can, you can Wolverine has claws eye. and you have eyelashes that go <laughs> into your eyes. <laughs> yeah. And I want the, um, I want it to affect me to motivate me to move to the next step that I need to do. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it's not really step. helpful. Yeah. Next and, step. You know, and I could we, pretend, but instead I do put an eyelash in my eye every time. Yes. You know what? But I like what you said about next steps because we are all about moving on to the next step here at mm. Podcast 616. And the next step we're moving to is a break. Um, we're going to take a break uh, over at Podcast 616. And when we come back, yeah, better really, we're going to talk about that coming out scene with Roberto and Jubilee mm. and that mother. And I will, of course, celebrate my new favorite phrase, my afternoon wine. <laughs> I, I love this woman. Uh, also, more Do brief. You? more rogue <laughs> you know ethan we're gonna talk about it uh <laughs> um so keep it right oh and also ozt and this person who i believe if you had the subtitles on you know his name is bastion um so we're gonna talk about that and more when we get back on this podcast so keep it right here to podcast 616 and we will be right back gentlemen across the nation i have an urgent message for you this episode of podcast 616 is brought to you by manscaped the brand that took your balls to space is now launching them into the ultra sphere, introducing the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Featuring a new cutting edge design and next generation dual skin safe blade heads for different shaves, it's pretty much a spaceship to take your boys downstairs to the next level. Join the 9 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with a brand new The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code PRESSPLAY. That is 20% off plus free shipping with the code press play at manscaped.com. Your balls have been through enough. It's time to go ultra with Manscaped. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Hey everyone, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of Producing While Asian. Join us in season two for more conversations with actors, artists, producers, and more from Broadway, Hollywood, and beyond every other Wednesday on the Press Play Podcast Network. Support for Podcast 616 is brought to you by Newark and Zanesville Auto Body. Safe, reliable collision repairs are their business. Local, family-run, and veteran-owned business serving Newark, Ohio, and Zanesville, Ohio, and surrounding areas. And guess what? They work with all insurance providers to make your experience hassle-free. Plus, ask about their special discounts for U.S. military veterans. Visit them today at autobodyofnewark.com and autobodyofzanesville.com to get your repair started. Their iCar Gold Class team of skilled collision repair technicians will make your vehicle like new again. And we're back. Ethan August, when do you like to take your afternoon wine? 
Well, currently I'm working a central time job, which is great because that means that my afternoon actually starts in the morning. And so, you know, you just like have a little breakfast cheese and wash it down with some afternoon wine. Ooh. Is that an official term, breakfast cheese? Mm-hmm. Is afternoon wine? <laughs> <laughs> and that is a definition of a touche. Uh, <laughs> so I, I prefer a oh, spritz. Yeah. Mm, who doesn't? Mm. Um, help me out here. Where is Roberto's mother located? So Jubilee and Roberto, so they're in Genosha, and they're like, oh my gosh, Roberto, you still haven't told your mother, your mother you're a mutant? We got to tell her because what if you were here and you died and she didn't know you have to give her the full truth which uh, yes i i think yes that that is important you should tell your family who you really are so they know who they're grieving um should something terrible happen but and where did they go because i know everyone else went to madripoor yeah it but looks like a uh, rich rich person in hell mm-hmm. uh rich, yeah, rich person in hell <laughs> all right so they go it so feels at Los pick. Angelesy to me. That's uh, that's what I thought. High rise, yeah. I can see that. And they get there, and I don't know if anyone picked up on this phrase, but just the butler was like, "Oh, your mother's having her afternoon wine in the in the lounge." I was like, "You slay bitch!" <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> so they go, and they have this. Roberto just immediately goes like, "I'm a mutant." Just like. <laughs> Immediately, it it cuts to it. It's Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like he's like, oh, thanks for being here. I don't know how I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it like this. Uh, It's like, (laughs) oh, okay. Oh. And then this fucking desperate housewife character takes a long sip of wine. She's like, I'm Mm. so relieved. Also, really funny. They he burned down four houses. (laughs) And they're like, did you think we didn't know? (laughs) Yeah, we were waiting. So many fires. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then. And I think I saw someone make this connection online because in X2, the movie, there's that famous scene where Iceman comes out to his parents as a mutant. The mom's like, have you ever tried not being a mutant? <laughs> and there was like, someone made Good this advice. connection. Like, it was what? Good advice. Right. Have you ever just tried not? <laughs> just don't do it. And someone made the connection of like, that was the response because that movie came out in 2002. But in 2024, the response is like, okay, great. Don't tell anyone. Mm. Keep it a secret. Um, because she's worried about the ever present shareholders. Logan Roy would hate to find out mm. his business partner had a mutant child. Oh, um, I love, it. I love it. Felicia, talk to me about the scene. This seems like a pretty entry point scene. This feels like one of the least confusing <laughs> sequences in this episode. I uh, think all of them, all of them locked in, you know? Okay. So t- talk to me about Roberto. Uh how do you how do you feel about Roberto, his mom and Miss Jubilee, the witness to all. Um, at first, when she sipped that wine for a long time, I was nervous because I was like, what is she going to say? Mm-hmm. Um, and then to be like, we always knew, like, you don't think we knew we were waiting for you. I was like, oh, what a lovely sentiment to be like, we were waiting for you to feel comfortable to come to me and say anything. I didn't want to force you. And then to say, but we're going to hide it. It's like, how could you say that in the same breath and be like, and this is what's best? Um mm-hmm. You know, I recently told my parents I started smoking weed and they had the same Oof. reaction. Yeah. Let's just not tell the shareholders. Yeah. <laughs> you think we didn't know? Felicia, you burnt down four houses. I didn't know how to start a lighter. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell all the Jamaican shareholders that you're smoking weed. <laughs> Don't be pissed. That's They'll beyond. Be. That's besides what they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel good about that joke. I don't have any self-consciousness about making that joke. And I'm going to keep going. I would like to draw a parallel, if you would allow me. Mm-hmm. Between Roberto's mother and reporter extraordinaire Trish Tilby. Mm. Oh, we're back to her. We're back to her. because I, 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 I looked at my notes and I forgot to mention a thing about Trish. Um, the thing about Trish is she has this moment with Beast where... Um, there's this interesting, it felt like a 2020 conversation from the year 2020. You remember when there were a lot of protests and demonstrations happening in the streets and businesses mm-hmm. were getting damaged. And there was that like life versus business debate of mm-hmm. like, oh, smashing windows is just destruction. Like Trish was literally like on the conservative side of things. Mm-hmm. And Beast has this really like crazy epiphany of like, oh, begging for your tolerance was our first mistake. You're just mad that we're asking for equality. I feel like there's a parallel between Trish and her thoughts and then Roberto's mother and this like, okay, just keep it to yourself. Like, don't 
like, I know you're there, but don't tell me. Like, don't alert me to your presence is basically like what both these women are kind of reporting. Mm -hmm. It's what the reporter is purporting. Um, Yeah, we say smart words on this podcast, you know? (laughs) We'll fuck Mary and kill later, but now we're smart. Is that crazy? Do we feel, did I speak out of turn? No, I really agree with that. They both have the same like political views where it's like, we don't want to pull back all the layers of the onion to fix things. Instead, we want to just like do enough to be okay for us to be okay, as opposed to like, hey, everybody is affected. So we really need to go deeper into these issues. So they really don't want to do the work, but they think they're so tired from doing the little bit of work they're already doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's spot on. That's yeah. I was going to ask too with the like because I, I think this episode makes those parallel points really well of the like mm-hmm. bringing those perspectives together and the different storylines. But I, I was curious, Felicia, like jumping in, did you have we kind of Roberto part of like Jubilee basically says like what if you were at the Pulse nightclub and your parents didn't know you were gay? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's I, I'm curious of like did you know X Men at all prior to watching this episode or like because this for a cartoon it's very much like we're gonna just set it today and make it and not shy away from anything that's going on and i feel like that parallel point that you just made damon really like highlights Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah is a cartoon the space to is it for (laughs) kids and that's originally that's whoever the creator i forgot what his name is i'm so sorry um isn't that why he like started this stanley stanley yeah um with yeah. the intention of having or having these conversations. Oh yeah. Um, I think when it like originally started, it was much, I mean, it was back when like Martin Luther King and like Malcolm loose, X, yeah. cause that's like professor X is Martin Luther King and Magneto is Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. But I, I think other writers throughout the years have found, um, that that can apply to them as well. My mm-hmm. diffuser is going off and this is not, I'm, my house is not on fire. If you see the smoke <laughs> wafting. I'm getting a vanilla scent in for the weekend. Anyway, um, yeah, other writers have like taken up that mantle, <laughs> taken up that mantle, and like applied it to you know. There's actually a lot of uh, discrimination in the world, um, mm-hmm. not just racially. As a gay black man, I'm not going to debate <laughs> who has it worse. <laughs> that feels like a losing battle. I found <laughs> well, myself should, about to. It do. should never be that where it's like, what's no. worse? It should be all of these are issues, and we all need to think about them instead of like having to pick and choose what it, which one is more important. It's like they yeah. all are. Yeah, I I uh, love that. That's why um, I kind of do think that this could be for kids too, because it's like, <laughs> when are we going to have these conversations? Are we never yeah. like? And mm-hmm. also, when I was young, adults were having these conversations at me in a negative way. So I'm supposed to get that, but not be able to have a conversation about it. Yeah. Yeah. Guillermo del Toro did a version of Pinocchio a couple years ago. And on the mm-hmm. press circuit, he was talking about, and this is like an old Frank Oz idea from like Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, that like fear and grief should be part of children's entertainment because they're going to experience mm-hmm. it regardless. Yeah. And putting it in programming for them just, helps them build the language to understand and process those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's so true. And, it, and I think part of this episode's strength is approaching these ideas from so many different angles in such a subtle way. And they move through them quickly without being like lip service mm-hmm. in a really deft way that I think it's never trying to make a comparison between like Roberta's experience and this extinction event and everything. This is not a spoiler, but it is one look ahead that, the episodes that follow this Felicia are a three part mm-hmm. episode called Tolerance is Extinction. Parts so one, two, and three. The show's really it knows what it's going on about. Okay, it's I'm a fan. Which I think it's cool that it yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that'll be the big question for Felicia at the end is like, will she continue watching? Don't answer now. Don't answer now. Don't. <laughs> Fuck, Don't. Oh, but I gotta answer. <laughs> so I wanna just leave the whole rogue journey for the end. And we'll talk about that, the, the last thing we talk about. So uh, this is the time to um, talk about Scott and Jean, uh, Cyclops and Jean Grey. Um, I, I'll i just say this. I am very anti-clone. Felicia, you're, I'm going to have to leave you, out, leave you out of this conversation because this is very much... <laughs> I think there are things you don't even know. I'm very, anti- clo- I'm very anti-clone. And I've said that every episode of this podcast. <laughs> and I just think... I know that Scott had a baby with Jean's clone and then Jean's clone died in the attack on Genosha to catch Felicia up. And that's, and that's tough. how big 
dude got there with the eye. <laughs> Big dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're getting there. Um, that's the baby who went to the future and grew up and is now back in the present. He grew up. Because yeah. of his techno virus. <laughs> Nerd shit. Ethan, please. Pump <laughs> 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 the brakes. <laughs> we can't get into the virus. Um, but I really like the scene. I like the scene. It's an interesting power that Jean has that she can feel the trauma mm -hmm. of the space psychically. I've never seen her do that. As and an empath, I, that happens to me. Oh, that happens to you? You pick up a you pick up a book and you know everyone who's ever read it. Yeah, I'm an oh. empath. I'm like, mm. uh, stay out, stay away from the but library. But you went, but you went with the eyelash thing, huh? When we talked about huh. what is it? What is it? Empath I just or eyelash? The empath as a as a burden, you know. Mm. And I didn't realize it's it's a, a gift. Yeah. Ah, uh, damn. So you did have both. <laughs> you gave one away. I. I love that this is happening in the sequence of our conversation and also where it is in the episode because uh, Roberto's scene talking about like X-Men's history of like civil rights and then Jean experiencing the psychic trauma of all the potential cut short and then her and Scott being like kind of like our relationship is the whitest thing. <laughs> it is, they're in the middle of a fucking disaster zone. And, yeah. and being like, all oh, these lives lost, kind of like our love. It's like you two. It's it's perfect from a show perspective because we need to keep that storyline alive. We need to move mm -hmm. through it. As a character thing, I'm like, Gene. Girl, zoom Gene. out. What you doing? Gene, girl. <laughs> <laughs> this, is this is messy. This is messy. Zoom out. <laughs> zoom out. Okay. I'm sorry. Scott, you didn't kill all these people. No our relationship be like oh we're talking about that now <laughs> if now right if now? not now you, if not now then when okay there's mm -hmm. always shit happening they had a fight genosha was attacked and now they're talking about their relationship you know <laughs> lay off lay off my boy cyclops this is not just for you Ethan. it's for everybody i like cyclops i'll say it loud and proud into a microphone <laughs> i like a leader i like a leader with pecs lock me up you know that's up Get your fucking cop boyfriend, Captain America, to lock me up. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Wait, why are you against clones? Oh, because they're not <laughs> real, and they were made, and they were made for trickery. Everyone's like, oh, clones, we can, like, harvest their organs. For th th I have only seen clones used for tricks. I've never seen a clone be made and, like... Mm. Or like, oh, uh, here's an extra yeah. organ or something. It's always for dis deception. Damon, you have to stop bringing this up. I said, I'm sorry that <laughs> I brought all those clones in for that one surprise party. And that I had no idea who was who. I padded the guest count. <laughs> <laughs> With a bunch of fake ass clones. Um, and, <laughs> and they're all like, we've met before. And you're like, but I don't remember. <laughs> 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 yeah we've met truly my nightmare to meet someone who i've met before but i don't remember oh my god i've heard a story of that from you damon uh but also just imagine being like 10 people that look alike and be like i have to remember different names for all of you yeah I need name tags. <sighs> yeah yeah clone one clone two also we find emma frost that's cool i hope she i i i was like are we gonna the diamond the, di diamond. the diamond, yes. I've um, always done well under pressure. <laughs> that, I liked that. I did too. I, this, and this, you know, and also great tracking for the show because Emma Frost has been on this animated show before, but the show has never established her diamond form. So this was like a nice, because that's like part of her powers in the books. So it was nice to like establish that. I think they did a better job than um, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, I think just about everything. Did a better job on X-Men Origins Wolverine. I'm posing like Emma Frost did in the X-Men Origin movie. <laughs> this is working. What year was this? 2006? 1951. Yeah. No, that makes sense. <laughs> One of, somewhere in between those two dates. <laughs> <laughs> I do like this moment when, and I guess we missed this in the... Um, scott president scene of him just being like if we can find just one survivor like that is a symbol of hope for everybody mm -hmm. and so, mm -hmm. so i do like that established and then it's emma turning into a diamond it's also a very sad moment where they're like oh it's a powerful telepath and scott goes madeline which is the clone. Jean's clone that he had a baby with uh this clone also is a telepath hopeful that she's alive 
But also in the comics, Emma Frost and Scott also a romantic thing. So I, I wonder know. if there's a little bit of a setup for that. I do wonder, did he find his next mistress? <laughs> you know? Who knows? I love mess. What can I say? Call me Marie Kondo. I love mess. Um, I think she famously doesn't like mess. I think she does because then she knows time to clean up. Mm. She has no then purpose if she's clean. Then there's Damn, is that what we're about to do with this next transition is mm. clean up? <gasps> wow, the clean up. No, we're going to suck some brains. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's also clean up. <laughs> rogue goes full rogue on Henry Gyrick. He's like, sugar, that's not what's going to happen right now. Because um, he's like, oh, what are you going to uh, look at my brain like Jean did? And she's like, no, I'm going to no. suck your soul. Also, at the moment where you're like, can the show get any wider? And then they show his prison. I would love to be in that prison. Yeah. <laughs> Just blasting opera music. A mansion? Yeah. A mansion. We're going to yada, yada, yada this to get there. Uh, she zaps Gyrick, and then someone comes by and smothers him with a pillow. Who could it be? We'll save that for later. The team gets a call from Bolivar Trask to go to Madripoor. They go. They meet up with Rogue. Rogue has this breakdown with Nightcrawler where it's established that she's not just grieving Gambit. She's grieving Magneto because mm. she loved them both. And isn't that love for real, you know? It must have been love. <laughs> but it's but over, it's over there. now. Mm. That's More John Legend, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm a real big John Legend fan. <laughs> um, so we go to this little like sciencey place. Oh my god, the fucking our vending machine is never out of diet. Let's go. I am so happy. I think Morph from the original cartoon series was always like the funny one, but like now he like has a team of writers clearly, and he's like actually funny. Because mm. um, just the moment where they're like riding in the elevator and he's like slurping <laughs> on the tank. The- <laughs> that was funny. And no one uh, said anything. I would have been like, no, you know it's not that good. Yeah. Yeah. Slurp it down quiet. Yeah. Also, I assumed it was slurp. like the oldest can of soda ever. Like they say they're never out of diet. And I was like, oh, because they're all fake. But then he drinks it. And I was like, Ooh. yeah. That's why his um, skin's so white. <laughs> he's drinking bad soda. Um, yeah, that soda was called Diet Pingo. This podcast is brought to you by Diet Pingo. Mm. Get a pingo. <laughs> Did you hear that? That's the sound of Pingo. Um, so they go. Where can I buy it? <laughs> I don't get, have. I don't have mouth. I don't have. I don't have. <laughs> I don't have belly. But I want so bad. Um, I don't know. Fucking eye roll to the Oppenheimer shout out, but I guess we know who he is now. It's quick. It's to the point. It also kind of throws Oppenheimer under the bus in a nice way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It it was such like poor man's Oppenheimer was funny, and then he actually quoted the i am now i have become deaf yeah and i was like okay okay and he wasn't even having sex during it i didn't think it was possible i this is a a small aside but um i was reminded rewatching this that i I went and saw challengers for the second time with a group (gasps) this weekend which (laughs) a whole other podcast also just throw this out there um luca if you want to direct an x-men movie challengers love triangle I don't know. We'll try it. But yeah, uh, Luca listens. He'll be listening. The director uh, challenger <laughs> listens to this for sure. Luca, hire me. After uh, when we were getting drinks after and talking, we like said one sentence about challengers, and then one of the gals I was with went, "Has anyone seen Oppenheimer? I've seen it thirteen times." <gasps> Are they okay? And that's all I was thinking during this scene. <laughs> was, I was like, I bet Trask saw Oppenheimer about thirteen times, and that's what led him here. <laughs> well. Oppenheimer doesn't come out until 2023, and we are famously in 1997. Mm. Oh, damn! Don't forget I have an eyelash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's working. It's working. <laughs> oh, works for other people as well. <laughs> All right, Ethan, Felicia, the debate. Rogue killed Bolivar Trask. Would you? Would I? Would you? Would you? Would you? Oh. Yeah. We're asking the hard if- questions today. If I had gone through what she went through, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. I mean, she's in pain and he's not giving her any answers. And she's like, what? Is, this is worthless. Yeah. But it's not who. Yeah, I drop his ass. 
But just uh, just because she does this action doesn't mean like that's who she is as a person. It just means that's who he meant to her in that moment where it's like, I have to do this. And I want to point out, this has been pointed out before, but let's just say this. Nightcrawler, he can teleport. He can pick up Trask when she gets dropped. Jean Grey, telekinesis, could be like, oh, wait, don't drop him. None of them did anything. They were like, um, looking at my nails. Might, hey, there, there might have been some shock in play. That's true. Because <laughs> it might have been a little bit of shock. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did when they you normally... gasp at all when she dropped him? I did. But Do you that think how... either of them dra- gasped for even a moment, Damon? <laughs> Counterpoint. When have they ever used their powers and not been shocked? Isn't it usually a shocking, like the heat of battle is usually a lot of anxiety? Isn't that what they're trained to do as X Men? Actually, as X Men, they're trained to point to a map and put an X on where they are from. <laughs> I am from Jamaica. Uh, <laughs> um, but I guess we don't need to debate because Bolivar Trask, bloop, 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 upgraded. He's a human sentinel. And he's. I don't just... know if that undoes the action. <laughs> I don't know if Nightcrawler later is going to be like, actually, Rogue, I changed my mind. He didn't actually die. He didn't actually die. He didn't actually die. So, so we all good. And I am going to forget it happened. <laughs> no one's going to try Rogue in a court of law. We need to wrap this up. So I'm just opening the floor for like, does anybody have any feelings about this fight? This epic fight? It's fun. Mm. It's it's Good a nice – the show is incredibly well-paced. It knows what it's doing uh, to then be like, and now, boom, 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 boom. And I, I think seeing everyone taken down in like a single hit is pretty great. Oh, yeah. And I was definitely um, freaked out when um, this like cyborg uh, Bolivar Trask was just going around. But he also like had enough memory to mock Cyclops. He was like, do remember still. Yeah. Yeah. But then Cable from the future zapped our guy, our Trask, with an EMP or something. Yeah. It is a good little, it's like, this is how it feels to be left behind by the future. <laughs> but the future shows up to save daddy. The future will always be there to show up for daddy. <laughs> and much like Maybe the future daddy. showing up for daddy, Podcast 616 showing up. For fuck Mary Kill. Um, I'm swinging us into the final segment of this episode. I think this is going to take some time because we have three characters who I don't think shared a single line of dialogue with each other. Uh-uh. We're in three very different scenes. So for this fuck Mary Kill, we we're we're getting to the end because if you've been listening to this podcast, we do not repeat people that we fucked married or and or killed. So we are getting down to the wires in these final four episodes. So on the docket right now is Nightcrawler. Captain America and Bolivar Trask. I will go first to give my guests time to think. Pre, mm. wait, Bolivar Trask pre or post? Mm. Well, well, purple skin transformation. Let's do purple skin. That's interesting to me. That's okay, more interesting. Now it's hot. Okay, and now it's hot. Now, <laughs> now it's hot. Now hold on. Now I got those big her. light cracks down your face. Is that an eyelash or is that a purple line of energy? Hello. <laughs> or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> um, I'm gonna kill Trask. Um, I'm going to do a rogue. Yeah, I'm going to go rogue. Kill Trask. He's a monster. He created the Sentinels. He hates mutants. I love mm. mutants. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, Some of my best friends work. are mutants. I'm going to fuck Captain America because I am not an idiot. I <laughs> I am really sets with... us up to be idiots if we don't go that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, fuck. Honestly, you can do whatever you want. Now but... I'm going to feel so stupid while I'm fucking Oliver Trask. <laughs> Off the side of the building. I'm going to feel so dumb. Off the side of a building. <laughs> I would feel so dumb, dumb. But that's just me. That's just my that's my journey. And we're we are on very different. We're on different paths. We're all a different paths. Captain America is gorgeous. I, you know, just bring the I would just say bring the shield. Nothing else. But and the mask. I, I want the I want the, <laughs> the little wingtips. <laughs> I want the little wingtips. Because you know what? Chris Evans didn't do the wingtips. I'm going to marry. I'm going to marry Nightcrawler. First mm. of all, we can go anywhere that he's been before. Quick teleportation. Such a what a great um commute uh with my husband, Nightcrawler. He can take me to his hometown of Germany, possibly Jamaica for a vacation, <laughs> uh and back again. Hybrids of the Germany. Uh, also, Nightcrawler seemingly is the most emotionally stable mm. person on this mm. entire show. 
and I need that. I need stability in my life. Also, bonus, he could marry. He could, he could return, establish a member of the clergy. I love it. I love it. I'm on board. Ethan, August, who are your picks? Yeah, I mean, I always do this on Fuck, Mary Kill, where I'm like, let's consider the power mm. in the fucking. Mm. Right? Oh, yeah. It's important. And out of that, Nightcrawler is maybe the most interesting. Wow. Because mm-hmm. he's bopping around. He's using his tail. Just bam, 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 he's bam, blue. Bam, bam. Yeah. Yeah. His Holy face eyes. is perpetually in shadow. Yeah. It's like, Mr. Where is he? Is he here? I yeah. don't know. But I I might have to, if you have America's ass in front of you, you got to do something with it. So I think it's, I think Cap gets the fuck. And then I will marry Bolivar Trask. <gasps> wow. <sighs> He's in, I can change him. I've seen him change <laughs> once from a human to a robot. I think what else I can do it again. Could change it back. <laughs> So you're going to kill Nightcrawler? No. No, I'm going to marry Nightcrawler and kill Trask. Uh, How can you not? Don't you want to be a part of that family, Mystique and Rogue? I do. I do. Thank you, Ethan. Felicia McLeod, please. Um, Okay. I'm going to... I'm obviously going to marry Nightcrawler because so wonderful. And also, we can figure out where we're both from, you know? And that'll be a beauty, beautiful, a beautiful discovery. Um, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> and then where am I from? Nightcrawler, help me. Um, I feel like you can't say you want to kill Captain America because I feel like not while you're being recorded. You not could. while being recorded, but I kind of, I'm, I think I'm fucking Bolivar and Bolivar. Bolivar. <laughs> I say Bolivar. But Boulevard. I say bowl Boulevard. of bears because he's bowl of like, bears because you never know what to expect. Um, and that's why. Okay, so you're actually into this because you want to fuck the bowl of bears. I want to fuck the bowl of bears. Mm, yeah. Sounds dangerous. Clawless. Yeah. Sounds more dangerous. <laughs> what's Felicia? What's the moment in this episode that really like set you in place for Trask? For that running for fear. The Trask Trist. There was one moment where he was telling them about the diet. Coke. Look, there's always Diet Coke in there thing, and he looked, he looked yes. deranged. He looked crazy, just right up my alley. He looked insane, and I was like, I've seen this on a dating app before. Yes, please, Felicia. They're never out of diet. <laughs> never out of diet. <laughs> and I'm like, my husband. And so, so you husband. will be fucking Captain America. <sighs> I'm killing Captain. Or you're killing Captain. Oh my God, you're killing Captain. Realize. I know this is crazy and I'm so sorry. He uh, is he is so sexy, but he just um did y'all ever watch This Is Us? Every episode. <laughs> when she was talking about when she I should be specific when um anyways, you'll figure it out. When she, uh, she there was a black woman and she was dating Beth. uh Beth. No, not Beth, but um, her cousin. When her cousin oh, was dating the brother. Karen. Mm-hmm. And she was like, uh, there's good. some moments where you feel like you can have patience and explain something to someone and you feel like they'll be able to receive that information and not change, but at least acknowledge your reality. I feel like with Captain America, I would tell him something and he would be like, no, that's not true because it's not true in my reality. And mm-hmm. I think that and that wouldn't be able to get me wet, you know, so yeah. Yeah. got to kill him. Got to kill him. Wow. OK, I might need more. This is us context. I've only seen episode seven. <laughs> and honestly that's a good episode to start with really into grief yeah honestly i have no doubt that episode seven of this is us is a fully grief filled episode i have yeah. no doubt in my mind um at what is... point damon while you're fucking captain america mm-hmm. do you yell cop <laughs> um i kind of think i just don't stop saying it oh throughout cop. Oh. Cop, cop, cop. uh that's the show everybody uh but <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a perfect way to end it. Um, obviously, there's a Bastion scene, but we'll talk about that more in episode eight. Bastion voiced by Theo James. Okay. Of yes. White Lotus. White Lotus what? is Theo James. Um, oh, yeah. We're going to talk about Bastion a lot next week. Um, Ethan August, um, where can people find you online? What is happening in your life? Anything to promote? I will use my promotion slot to, uh, if you're listening to this, please 
my very talented friend just put together an Indiegogo campaign for a short film called Surgeons. Oh, right, um, me. Yeah. So if you are listening to this and you are a fan of the talented Mr. Damon Reister, please go check that out. That's where I'm putting my plug. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Felicia, no pressure, but uh, that's what he thought. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, <laughs> that's my plug. And then follow me on Instagram with laugh with V and that's I'll also be plugging surgeons. Yeah. Thank you both so much. Yes. Uh, you can follow me, Damon Royster, at my Instagram account, Black Chandler. That's B-L-K, like Black, and Chandler, like Chandler Bing. Uh, so at Black Chandler, you can find all the information about Surgeons, my short film. We are crowdfunding. Um, we will be going until ooh, June 7th, I believe. So donate. We've got perks. I'll, I'll put your ass in the movie. I will put your ass in the movie. Okay. Just your or, ass. <laughs> just your ass. I hope you're okay with that. And if you want to follow this podcast, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at podcast 616P3. That P3 stands for Press Play Podcast, the podcasting network that lets me talk about America's ass all the live long day. Producer Michael, if you want to hop on the podcast real quick, uh, hop on the mic. Uh, what letter grade would you give this podcast episode we just did? A double plus. Yeah. Double plus. <laughs> Two pluses for grief. <laughs> yes. Always, Ugh. Yeah. What a great way to start your day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> grieving is important nightcrawler said so um so thank you both so much we'll be back next week to start the finale discussion of x 97 but until that time please remember wait we have a question from the audience ethan Fel felicia are you going to keep watching the show i'm going to keep watching the show they got her ass in. got her ass, uh, got her ass. <laughs> nerd shit <laughs> got you welcome so sorry for secret invasion um <laughs> I so was until nervous. next <laughs> i shook why pressing play <laughs> until next time remember much like having a podcast great power comes with great responsibility <laughs> <laughs>